Intel just lost $100 billion in market value in less than two days. And this wasn't caused by a stock market crash or a sudden financial panic. No, it happened because of a quiet but powerful move from Beijing, a single decision that flipped the entire game overnight. Intel, once crowned the king of chips, suddenly found itself exposed and vulnerable, like a pawn caught in the middle of a global tech war. On the 12th of April, 2025, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology issued a policy that changed everything. Without much fanfare, they banned government agencies and major state-backed companies from buying chips made by U.S. manufacturers, and that meant Intel, AMD, Micron, all caught in the crossfire. The official reasons given were concerns over digital sovereignty and supply chain security, but behind the scenes, the impact was immediate and severe. Procurement systems were rewritten within hours, and by the next morning, key contracts with China Mobile, the state grid, and Huawei-linked server vendors had been cancelled. Intel, which had counted on China for nearly 27% of its revenue last year, about $22 billion, watched its stock price plunge nearly 20% by the close of trading two days later. This wasn't just a reaction to lost sales. Investors were pricing in something far bigger, the beginning of a complete phase out of U.S. chips in the Chinese market. But what if the chips themselves aren't really the main target here? What if this move is part of a much larger strategy, one that aims at U.S. innovation itself? On the surface, Beijing's policy looks defensive, a way to protect their own supply chains. But experts suggest a far more aggressive, surgical approach. Emily Jin, a geopolitical analyst at the Center for a New American Security, puts it bluntly, this isn't about decoupling, it's about deliberate erosion. Intel's deep reliance on Chinese customers made it an ideal target. Unlike companies like NVIDIA, which earn less from China and have spread their AI partnerships globally, Intel is heavily tied to Chinese infrastructure through its PC and server processors used in enterprises and telecom networks. By pulling this thread, China didn't just punish Intel, it sent shockwaves into America's most vital tech corridors. Intel's stock plunge dragged down major semiconductor ETFs and indexes, sparking a wider market sell-off. The Wall Street Journal described the ripple effect as broad, but Intel bore the brunt because it remained too dependent on China, a vulnerability that only becomes more apparent when you look at the bigger picture. Intel's decline wasn't sudden. It's the result of years of missteps and missed opportunities layered on top of growing structural risks. Back in 2011, Intel controlled 80% of the global PC processor market. By the end of 2024, that share had dropped to just 57%. Meanwhile, rivals like AMD gained ground thanks to Intel's repeated delays in rolling out next-generation chip nodes at 10 and 7 nanometers. On top of that, tech giants like Apple and Amazon started designing their own custom chips, bypassing financially, Intel struggled as well. The company reported massive losses, including a $2.8 billion quarterly net loss in early 2023 and cut thousands of jobs by late 2024. By the time China's policy hit in 2025, Intel had lost not only pricing power and market dominance, but also the strategic insulation it once enjoyed. As semiconductor policy expert Doug O'Neill from Rand points out, Intel's business model is stuck in yesterday's globalization, a model Beijing has now decisively shut down. But this move goes beyond reacting to Intel's weaknesses. It's part of a longer game. According to leaked internal planning documents obtained by Reuters, China aims to eliminate all U.S.-sourced semiconductors from public infrastructure, energy systems, and telecom equipment by December 2027. The plan known internally as the Clean Silicon Directive, mandates that by early 2026, 80% of central government computing must run on domestically designed chips. For Intel and other American chipmakers, this isn't just a loss of market access, it's a forced obsolescence inside the world's second largest tech market. Morgan Stanley now estimates this policy could cost U.S. chipmakers as much as $350 billion in cumulative revenue by 2027. J.P. Morgan analysts warn that while the immediate losses are painful, the long-term damage is strategic. If China succeeds, it proves that the global semiconductor supply chain can survive 
and maybe even thrive without U.S. technology. This precedent could inspire other countries like Brazil, Indonesia, and parts of Europe to follow suit. And then came the real shocker. In September 2024, a teardown firm called Tech Insights stunned the global tech community when it revealed that Huawei's Mate 70 Pro smartphone contained a domestically produced 5 nanometer Kirin chip made by a company named SMIC. This chip was built using older, more traditional lithography machines, not the cutting-edge EUV machines from Dutch manufacturer ASML that the U.S. assumed China couldn't access. The Kirin chip employed advanced multi-patterning techniques previously thought too inefficient for such small node production. Meanwhile, Intel was still grappling with yield problems at its Ohio fab and had not yet mass-produced its new 18 angstrom node. Huawei's chip wasn't just a technical achievement. It was commercially successful. With over 45 million Mate 70 devices shipped in just six months, showing both strong domestic demand and supply chain maturity. SMIC's revenue surged 47% year-over-year in the first quarter of 2025, largely fueled by state-backed contracts. At the same time, Intel's data center revenue dropped 22% that John Bateman, a technology policy fellow at Carnegie, summed it up. The U.S. bet on bottlenecking China's tools, while China bet on scaling what it already had and won. With Huawei's chip ecosystem now operating independently, the biggest barrier to fully replacing Intel inside China is no longer technical, it's simply a matter of time. This was never supposed to happen like this. The U.S. held the patents, the factories, the global suppliers, yet Huawei leapfrogged the expected playbook without any of the pieces Washington thought were essential. If Huawei can do this with smartphones, what happens when they turn their attention to servers, cloud infrastructure, and AI chips? What started in 2015 as a bureaucratic roadmap has now become one of the most aggressive industrial transformations on the planet. By early 2025, more than 75% of China's strategic sector's aerospace, power grids, telecom had partially transitioned to domestic semiconductor suppliers. Huawei, SMIC, Elson, and others are now supported with upwards of $58 billion annually from the state while U.S. firms like Intel are systematically shut out of procurement chains. Nina Xiang, founder of China Money Network, observes that Beijing isn't racing to catch the U.S. anymore. They're building a parallel ecosystem that doesn't need it. The U.S. share of Chinese chip imports has fallen to 28% in 2024, down from 41% in 2021, while domestic alternatives now hold over 55% of government computing contracts. The real question isn't if China can replace U.S. firms anymore, it's how soon they'll stop needing them entirely. But can Intel respond fast enough before that drawbridge is fully raised, or has that window already closed? The Chips and Science Act unlocked $52.7 billion in federal incentives, with Intel set to receive $8.5 billion in grants and $11 billion in loans. Yet despite the massive funding, execution lags continue. Intel's Ohio Megafab, nicknamed Silicon Heartland, is now expected to start partial operations in late 2026, nearly a year behind schedule due to zoning and construction delays. Meanwhile, Taiwan's TSMC is on track to begin 3 nanometer chip production in Arizona by the third quarter of 2025. Intel's $8.2 billion deal with Amazon Web Services, announced in early 2025, offers some short-term relief, but analysts warn it won't cover the $13.7 billion in annual revenue. Intel risks losing from China by 2027. As Abhinav Davaluri from Morningstar puts it, government support can stabilize Intel but can't accelerate Moore's law or buy back lost time. What does this all mean for everyday consumers? The economic impact won't stay confined to corporate boardrooms. In 2025 alone, Intel has announced layoffs affecting over 1,200 employees, primarily in Oregon and California. These cuts follow a sharp 19% decline in client processor shipments, directly tied to falling demand. Consumers will feel the pain too. Leaked pricing roadmaps, reviewed by Bloomberg, show major PC manufacturers like HP and Dell planning to hike prices by 12 to 17% on upcoming Intel-powered models, 
citing supply volatility and lower production volumes. Without China to absorb chips at scale, Intel faces a tough choice. Cut output or raise prices to maintain profit margins. That means it's not just laptops, cloud hosting costs, enterprise server, hardware, and AI acceleration units used in healthcare and logistics will all become more expensive. This isn't some abstract supply chain problem. It's about to hit your wallet. Despite the public funding and potential price hikes, the question remains, can Intel really recover? Or is this just the beginning of a long decline? Intel's future now depends on a race between capital investment and staying relevant in a hyper-competitive industry. With over $19 billion in chipmaker support and strategic partnerships with Amazon Web Services and the Department of Defense, there's a foundation for a comeback, but investors remain skeptical. Intel's stock has underperformed the semiconductor index by 31% over the past year. Goldman Sachs recently downgraded the stock, citing persistent margin pressure, missed timelines, and rising foreign competition. More concerning is Intel's shrinking innovation lead. Its 18 angstrom node isn't expected to reach mass production until mid-2026, while Samsung and TSMC already have 3 nanometer chips in commercial production and are testing 2 nanometer prototypes. Former Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger, now a strategic advisor, warned on CNBC, it's not about winning one quarter, it's about staying in the game for the next decade. But staying in the game means more than building factories, it means regaining technological credibility. Intel hasn't delivered that yet. And, if you think Intel is the only target, think again. China's next move could hit even closer to home. Today, it's Intel making headlines, but tomorrow could bring a full-scale export ban on gallium, rare earth minerals, and AI training chips. Washington's response is coming, but it might already be too late. Behind this tech war lies a much deeper question. Can the country that invented the semiconductor era survive its own dependence on foreign supply chains? Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our next video.